back to another episode of Five Minutes on Mike. And I am Pastor Mike, Associate Pastor at Grace Baptist Church, Pennville, New York. And I'm excited to continue our talk about being a temple of God. If I was to summarize part one, and I'm going to encourage you to go back and watch that if you haven't, but if I was to summarize it, I would say that there's a responsibility in the now to live as a temple of God, based on 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, but if we move forward, what is the reality of being a temple of God in the future? What's the importance of it? What's the end game? As I said, I'm using the word reality for this version, for this topic today. So we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading verses 1 to 8. I'm going to start the clock at that point and then talk about being a temple of God in the future. So let's look at this. It says, for 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we are in this tent, grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that our mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. For we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For we are confident, yes, well, rather pleased to be absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. Hmm. Great passage there. Let's get the clock going as I look at this five minutes on Mike being a temple of God in the future. So, important points here. Three important points. First off, I'm going to talk about temporary housing. I've always had a, a vision of someday retiring and living in an RV, traveling the country with my wife, uh, maybe visiting my children. Hopefully they move in all different points all over the country that we can visit, maybe one out west, one down south. Um, who knows? That's kind of a vision I have. Um, but the reality is, is that I don't know if I could live in an RV for all the rest of my life. Um, it's not permanent. It's not what I'm really designed to be. Um, I'm supposed to be in a home. I'm supposed to be able to be comfortable, um, not crammed. I'm a big dude. And it, not going to happen. So temporary housing, what do I mean by that? Well, that's important because when we look at this passage, it's talking about this body, this tent, this temporary dwelling place, this temple that we dwell in, is temporal. That it's not permanent. It's not meant to be forever. And that's an important aspect when you think about it because since the fall of man, going back to Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve, when they took of the fruit and uh, sinned before God, that contaminated, from that point on, the rest of the human race. We, at that point, mankind as a whole, became tainted. And we know from Scripture, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That there's none righteous, no, not one. And that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we realize that, scripturally, that this body, this physical being, uh, this mortal being that I am, is temporary. But also... As we think about the fall of man, what happened because of sin, we also realize from this passage that there's a tainted living, that we are not perfect, that because of this, there's issues. It talks about in this passage, groaning. Um, I'm realizing that more and more as I get up every morning in the morning, <laughs> oh, my, my knees ache, my hips pop, you know, hey, it's just, it's getting tough. And I'm only in my 40s, so Lord knows what's gonna happen next. But the reality is, is that this is temporary, and that creates an issue for us that it's unavoidable that there's going to be problems. And in this world where we want perfect, we want everything to be right, we want everything to be um, just great, realize that it's not going to happen. This world is not meant for that. It's just a temporal dwelling place that we are living in. There's going to be sickness. There's going to be issues. And as much as I hate admitting that, that's the truth. So when I think about it, there's a tainted living that we live in, according to this passage. But the hope here is the timing of his presence. My last point. Timing of his presence. What do I mean by that? To be present in this body is to be absent from God. 
to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. There's no delay. If you know Christ Jesus, if you have him as your personal Savior, if you've accepted, accepted him into your life, not based on anything else, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. We realize that we have a hope that's eternal. Amen to that, because I realize that this body is not going to last for the long term. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There's no waiting period. There's no eight days, no layaway, no purgatory. None of that's scriptural. Scripture says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. If you find a cross, what was he told? When he cried out the Lord for help, he was told, today you shall be with me in paradise. What amazing truth when you think about that, the timing of his presence. To be absent from this is to be present with him. Then he goes to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we shall be also. Amen to that. So, kind of wrapping this up, there's going to be a wanting, there's going to be a desire, there's going to be issues of us wanting more in this body. And we see that played out all throughout the world. We see that in the way mankind behaves, that there's a wanting, there's more. But the reality is, is that it will never be satisfied, it will never be complete until the day we're with him. And I stop and think about for a second, um, I have a, a loved one, one of my family members is currently in hospice not knowing the day of when the Lord will call her home. And it's difficult to watch, it's difficult to think about that, it causes grief. But the reality is this, that she knows Christ Jesus. I've talked to her, I've had that experience where I know for sure she knows Christ. As much as I can, because I can't see the heart, she knows Christ. But I know as soon as he calls her home to be absent from this body, to be present with the Lord. What is the future of the temple of God? To be with him. I hope you know that. I hope you have that assurance of Christ Jesus. Perfect timing. Look at that. Time's up. In conclusion, stop and think about this. That there is a responsibility right now to be a temple of God. But the reality of the truth of God's word is, is that when he calls us home, we shall be with him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. But when we do come, what an amazing truth, what an amazing testimony that will be to be someday in his presence. Amen. And may you know that peace, that peace that passes all understanding. May you know the truth that this earthly temple, even though it may be falling apart and some may be worse than others, the fact is, is that someday we'll be with him. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.